So the, the starting slide here is that we all have collected many different types of images through our past, whether they be photographs that have been handed down to us or that we've taken ourselves, and documents are extremely important in our, in our genealogy and telling our story. Uh, and that, of course, is the theme of this presentation. So a little bit about VividPix. So we started in business eight years ago and we created a software and have received a patent for the automatic correction of underwater photos. And about three years ago, somebody asked whether we had ever thought about old photos. And since Randy and I have long history with Kodak, uh, we definitely had thought about old photos in the past and that seemed like a good time to create it. So our second patent is for the automatic correction of, of faded photos and documents. So a picture says a thousand words, and we've created a software that allows folks to be able to simply reach down into their uh, file folders, select one or more images. The software artificial intelligence analyzes the image in order to be able to correct the image. And the software views the center image as being the best fix. And then with one click, you're able to improve your photo. As we've gotten to know the genealogy community better, Allen County at Roots Tech two years ago, and they, uh, three months after we had met, said, do you realize how good of a job your software is doing on documents? So uh, Randy, my business partner, who holds over 150 patents in color and image science, we VividPix hold two full patents. Um, he created an algorithm to improve documents. So you're able to improve color, black and white sepia. And as we like describing, uh, words are important. As a picture says a thousand words, but words are extremely important. So we're able to improve whether it be old microfiche microfilm records that um, we all know, unfortunately, sometimes the, the capturing of those documents did not go quite as well that there was too much light in the middle and not enough light in the corners and that makes it quite difficult to be able to read some of the uh, some of the records that we download um, we then went further and created the ability for you to be able to zoom into a document and to be able to notate and or transcribe the information that you're now able to read and doing a presentation a little over a year ago in Allen County that they said um, a question from the audience was, if you um, please tell me about metadata, how do I do it, why do I do it, and the like. So I was back over there a couple of weeks later and they, Allen County said, did you realize how important of a, of a question that was? And I said, please explain. And they said, well, metadata is an extremely important part of, of genealogy a lot of us are recommending to folks to use metadata, but it's a very difficult process. So if you all could create the way for people to be able to add metadata to their images, that would be really helpful. Um, so we created this very simple interface, uh, which I'll go through a demonstration in a moment, in order for you to be able to add metadata, tags, um, to site, all kinds of different things within the interface itself and then you're able to have all of that information automatically saved into the document. Uh, we're very proud that a number of people are thinking highly of it, whether it be Kenyatta Berry, who is a host of Genealogy Roadshow uh, down in Florida. I'm sure you're familiar with Drew Smith of Genealogy Guys, uh, Lisa Louise Cook, who I think you've already spent some time with this morning, very well respected. Maureen Taylor, I think, is on After Me on photo organization as well as um, dating and things. Uh, Dave Lambert, uh, well thought of through New England and the military and Allen County Public Library themselves. So the purpose of this slide is to provide you a quick overview. So let's look at the actual software because for you to be able to tell your story, to create your story, you need to be able to look back and to make all of this information better. Um, so the software is extremely easy to use, simply um, click select an image, um, and as you might expect, uh, before we do a release, uh, we go through a, a whole host of um, different images that either A, are representative 
or B, we've had problems with in the past. Uh, we want to make sure that our software is always pretty awesome. So I'm going to select a few images. I'll select that record. I'll select um, an old envelope, uh, a picture of me, and an old black and white. So I was holding down the control key in order to be able to select more than one image. So I open them. And here's where we give you the nine up screen. And the nine up screen, again, the software is identifying um, that the, the center image is best. We have, everyone does see lightness and contrast differently. So we have more contrast, less light in the bottom left, less contrast, more light in the top right. As this is a document, I'm going to click the faded document algorithm. And with one click, we've been able to clean it up quite nicely. I'm going to select the middle top. And now we're able to see what the image was previously and with one click, the improvement. Uh, hopefully you agree that this looks a whole lot better. And as I was describing before, uh, we've got the ability to add metadata. So you're able to look at all of the current metadata within the image. You're able to title, you're able to add author, you're able to add comments, you're able to image tag, and add your copyright and, and or um, any, um, any way you want to keep track of ownership. And you can write the image and you save. And at that point, all of the information of metadata that you've saved, all the information on uh, the improved document is able to be saved simply by clicking Save Next. Um, some softwares you need to create a second file before you start fixing the pick. Uh, we automatically correct a second file. Uh, you never want to lose your original scan. Uh, from an image improvement standpoint, you, you would prefer not to be trying to fix a fixed image, always working with the original scan. In addition, we have this area called output directory. So all of your fixed images, let's say that your images were sitting in pictures, old pictures. Uh, we're creating a new output directory called Vivid. And with that, all the fixed pics go into the Vivid folder. But you may want to be naming it anything else. Um, this could be a, um, a, an old vacation. It could be a person. It could be a location. And now all of that information is going to be going into that folder. All the fixed picks are going to go into that folder. I hit Save Next. The next image comes up automatically. So I'm going to select the center image. And with one click, I've made it quite a bit better. But I'm a stamp collector, as an example. I'm not. But I'm going to highlight that area. And I want to recalculate, I want to use the algorithm in order to be able to improve just that area. So I'm going to click this recalculate cropped image. I'm going to accept that fix. And just that quickly, you've been able to really, really improve an area of an image. And that could be a person, that could be uh, an area within a census, that could be a stamp. You're able to save. So this is no longer a document. This is a faded printer slide. So we have faded printer slide. We have badly faded printer slide. And of course, we can improve your current digital or cell phone images. So this is one that, uh, depending on your screen, I'm going to select the one just to the left of center. And with one click, my sister and I uh, look years younger than than we did on the fade. And uh, obviously, we've brought through a lot of the detail of this image. Um, if, in fact, the image was a black and white, which I'll show you in the next image, you're able to fine tune and add black and white. Um, sepia, so images that are yellow red by natural uh, processing process of, of a sepia image, we're able to fine tune for those. Uh, we also have all kinds of detail edit sliders that you're able to fine tune as well. So I was working so far in the easy edit mode. In detail edit, 
I'm able to adjust lightness contrast and vividness, which is saturation. Um, so if saturation or vividness is the amount of color that you're adding or, or deleting, uh, reducing within the image. Of course, you're able to also adjust um, cyan, magenta, and yellow, and red, green, blue. Um, oftentimes, um, people say, well, can you do everything at once? So we are able to create a batch process. So let's say that I wanted to be able to save this fix. Um, I've got multiple things on my screen. So I want to name this um, Janice and Rick. And I can save that fix. So let's say that this holiday season, um, my folks had taken pictures of us. They had kept them in the envelope that they had gotten back from the processing lab. And all of these images had faded at the same rate. At this point, you can apply this same fix to all of the different images that um, that are sitting within that, that photo folder. So this can really s speed up your process and this bypasses the dine up screen and, and automatically just um, improves all of the images in the queue to this fix. Um, if you want to go up to the nine up process, simply click the drop down arrow within setting name and go up to the nine up process. If I'm happy with that fix, I hit save. And I think the last one I brought up was a black and white. Yep. So this is also a faded printer slide. You're able to select. Um, I'm able to fine tune this as a black and white. I'm able to, within our crop, we've got um, multiple aspect ratios. So freeform crop allows us to be able to adjust any size, which we'll show you in a moment, or if you, it's a square, an old 126 picture, a traditional size print that we think of with 35 millimeter, a four by six, or if I wanted to make a five by seven or an eight by 10, I can, I can restrict the cropping aspect ratio to those sizes. So then when you go to print, it's properly sized. So within freeform, I simply click where I wish the crop to begin, release where I wish it to end, and now I've got rid of all of that not not so good part of, of the photo and zeroed out on this lovely couple themselves. So what we're all about, VividPix, is making it fast and easy in order to be able to bring back to life all of your photos, all of your documents, in order for you to be able to share them, enjoy them, and then from a research perspective with your documents for you to be able to read them in order to be able to improve your research. We frequently will hear people describe that they had been looking at records for a long time. Let's say that I had found something on Ancestry or Family Search, and I downloaded that image, and it was old, and then you know it was microfiche cap and decades ago. Unfortunately, it was difficult to read some information. Well, now you're able to read the information, and what we do frequently here is it allows people to head down a path that they did not know previously was um, was available within the document. So it should help your research out quite a bit. I know that we are here on a condensed uh, time together. I want to be able to open up the, the presentation to any questions that you all may have, if that's appropriate. In the meantime, that's, that's really cool, um, the difference between the two photographs that we're looking at right now. Thank you. Yeah, let me, um, as those are coming in, answer some normal questions. So the cost of our software is $49.99. Um, two uh, is when you purchase our software, you're able to place it on two computers. Um, so you're able to place it on a Windows Windows, a Mac Mac, a Windows Mac, um, you know, two different computers. Um, we do not care uh, if you put it on two different types of operating systems. Um, three we provide free updates. Um, we've, we've spoken to the market quite a bit, and there are, again, lots of different softwares that are available, some better than others, um, different learning curves, and many of them are subscriptions. And uh, a lot of folks 
do not like to have to ongoingly pay for something. Uh, so we provide free updates. Restore has been on the market for over three years. Uh, we've provided free updates over all that time. So when we added document fix, that was a free update. When we add metadata, that was a free update. Uh, we're going to be releasing the ability to improve raw. So raw is the information that would come directly out of many different types of cameras. Um, we're providing that for free in Restore. Um, so we provide free updates. It's not to say that we will never have a full upgrade. I want to be transparent. Is uh, for instance in our scuba software, you could you adding raw is an extremely complex thing to do within photo within photo software. And uh, when we added raw to scuba, that was an upgrade. And what we did was we let anyone who had purchased the software in the previous year, we gave them a free upgrade. Anyone who had purchased our software in the previous multiple years before that, we gave a 50% discount. Um, or they could, ten, could continue to use the software that they had grown to, to love. So um, they could continue to do that. Um, so again, we, we provide free updates, not saying it will never be an upgrade, but it's not an annual thing. Uh, like or a subscription like many other softwares um, do. We've got a number of questions here. Um, yeah. and we do have a few minutes, so um, let's see. Um, James asks, how does the system work with slides? Yep, so we'll work with any type of image. So whether it be a scanned print, a scanned slide, um, old art, um, newsprint, magazines, all, to us it's all an image. So when you scan a slide, you're doing it at a high, higher DPI, uh, 1200 or 2400 DPI because it's only a one by one image. Uh, and then we fix slides just like we do prints. Okay. Um, Lori asks, what resolution do you suggest we scan photos and documents at for best results? Yep. 300 is the minimum that you would ever want to scan on an ongoing basis. Uh, we recommend 600 DPI, and the reason for that is, is that oftentimes you do crop into an area, and as your dots are being spread apart, that you know if you 2x'd a 600 DPI, you're now down to 300 DPI, which is um, a nice standard to think towards. If you're planning on having to get even deeper into an image, then I would recommend going into a 1200 DPI. But as a standard 600 DPI, JPEGs are, tip, uh, are great, TIFFs are better. Um, TIFFs are better for archive. And uh, Cheryl asks, is this both Windows and Mac? Yes, it is. Uh, we offer Windows and Mac software. Great. Um, Constance wants to know, if we get the software, does it come with a tutorial? Um, yes. Um, so within our help area, right within the software itself, it has a number of um, detailed explanations on how to do different things. In addition to that, on our website, within the support area, uh, we have full tutorials, uh, video tutorials, and whenever we add new features, we create new tutorials as well. Wonderful. Um, let's see. Uh, Barbara wants to know if this works on an iPad. They do not. They work on computers, um, not mobile devices. Okay. And Terry asks, will the metadata stay with pictures if they're uploaded to Ancestry or Family Tree Maker software? Um, that depends on, on what they do. So what we actually do, um, so... Uh, as an example, we were just fixing with that one image. All of the metadata we just put in is now sitting within the image itself. Some people do strip metadata, for instance, you know, Facebook, Google, and they do strip metadata. I'm not versant enough in everyone on, on who does strip metadata. Well, I'd like to thank you very much, Rick. This has been 
Excellent. File. Bye. Give your picks and documents the vivid picks fix.